Thank you so much for joining us today for the Harvard College Admissions Podcast. Uh, my name is Li Ming Pan. I am an admissions officer. And today we have with us an international student from Zimbabwe, Patience Madumira, to share more about her international student experience here. Patience, please introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Lee. Uh, my name is Patience Madumira. I live in Zimbabwe. I'm a rising sophomore. I plan to study statistics and I'm going to be in math house. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think from the very beginning of, I mean, I was once an international student myself coming to the U.S., so I think a lot of students' experiences coming to the U.S. is different. Could you share more about what your um, application process was like coming from Zimbabwe and how that might have differed from perhaps your other um, classmates who might have been applying to schools um, locally? Yeah, uh, so like uh, a lot of things are quite different, arranging for the examination boards, like I get to take AP classes and I know domestic students uh, take some of those uh, classes uh, and even applying for financial aid because uh, way I come from in Zimbabwe, we don't uh, file taxes. So I didn't understand how those processes work, like how I have to submit the CSS profile and like the tax filing documents. But fortunately, I got a lot of help with sending emails emails and I'll get prompt uh, responses so that was quite helpful but it was I would say it was quite different yeah and I can imagine since even the domestic students only do this process one time to come to college right so um, what other resources did you um, did you take advantage of uh, when you're applying uh, so I mostly used uh, the website uh, review videos by students, uh, what classes would be like. I also sent in emails uh, to ask about like, oh, how many extra curriculums should I put? And I got a lot of help. My college counselor also helped me out. That's wonderful to hear. And uh, what was, I'm always curious to know when you're coming to the US, how is that transition like? You. Um, of studying far away from home, a um, different system from perhaps what you've been preparing for in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's definitely a lot of transitioning to make. Uh, starting with the weather, uh, we don't have uh, such cold winters in, in Zimbabwe. So uh, the winter was definitely a shock for me. But uh, fortunately, uh, my academic advisor was also my, was also my proctor gave me a heads up. She was like, hey, it's going to be uh, darker in the days. So just having a feeling of like what's ahead uh, helped me out, I would say. And also how the classes are structured, uh, especially the math classes. I, I was used to like a, a lecturing system where the teacher is the one like uh, giving you most of the information. But when I came here, it's mostly the students doing the work. And I wasn't like familiar with working in groups. so. That was a bit of adjusting to make. Uh, talk about the food. Uh, <laughs> it's so different, like completely different. I mean, it's only in the US where you have dessert for breakfast. <laughs> what kind of dessert for breakfast? Wait, is this like, IHOP for pancakes for breakfast, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, people have donuts for breakfast. <laughs> so it's like, it's a, it's a bit of adjusting you have to make, but it's not that bad. You get to learn new things. Uh, and start liking new things, so. Yeah, that's wonderful. And then that is quite an experience and it seems like you've really opened up um, kind of your um, your mind to trying new things and you're curious about how things are different in the US. Um, so being so far away from home, I'm sure there's some things that you miss. How have you been able to you know, find community or perhaps find that food or I'm just thinking now maybe you're thinking uh, missing certain kind of like how do you stay connected to people back home different ways you might have um, different ways you might have helped with that perhaps um, kind of homesickness oh yeah so I do talk to my parents over the weekend and like I have video calls with my friends they call but Harvard tries a lot to keep international students uh, in a community there's uh, there's the Woodbridge Society uh, there was foremost for international students, uh, and then there's also the Harvard African Students Association. There's usually parties, and they try to make uh, home food to to bring it, to bring back that nostalgia. And I get to eat some of the food back home over there. And there's also like uh, cultural nights where you have to dress up culturally. That just uh, brings in a sense of community and creates home away from home, I guess. 
That's so nice. Yes, definitely the taste of home is something that it's not easy to bring. So that's wonderful that there's that opportunity to have um, those places to help you feel at home and also help you kind of um, find a way to perhaps feel like you have somewhere to hang out or others that are going through the same experience as you. <laughs> so speaking a little bit more about, you touched on it, um, the academics of how it's different from how you were in uh, Zimbabwe preparing for or finishing high school to coming to the US. Uh, and could you share more about perhaps the differences in that and the differences in what some might uh, some prospective applicants might be thinking about when they're applying, like what are the things they should be looking out for or that should consider knowing that they'd be coming to the US or coming to Harvard for college? So like the Harvard college system, I'd say the liberal arts uh, system, it's very flexible. You get to study like a little bit about everything and maybe more about one specific specific field that's your concentration and that's very different from back home because if you're interested in STEM uh, which you most likely get acquainted with in your A levels uh, if you go to college you only get to take classes in that field if you're gonna do humanities all of your classes are gonna be in that field which is completely different from here if you're doing a uh, anything STEM related, uh, you get to take classes in the humanities, uh, you get to take philosophy classes. It's just like you get to try a little bit of everything and that's how you get to know what you'd be interested in doing in the long run. It's not very restrictive because at times uh, some of my peers uh, back home would settle on a career just because uh, that's what they have just uh, been talking about since growing up with parents. Oh, you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be an accountant, you're going to be a lawyer. They actually never get to take classes in those fields and maybe find out if they like them or they don't like them. But if you come here and you take a biology class, you take a history class, you take an accounting class and you see how all of that goes, your decision is much more informed than if you just decide without getting like a taste of what it feels like to be in that field. And I think that's something that's very great in the liberal arts education system. Yeah, that's wonderful because I know to decide even at 17 or 18 to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life is really tough <laughs> and to make that decision. <laughs> yeah, because you're only so young and you don't really know how it works. <laughs> and you could be changing your mind at any time, even here when you only have to declare your major in the first semester of your sophomore year. So technically you haven't declared your major yet, but what are you thinking of? Um, oh, so I'm thinking of uh, concentrating in um, my majoring in statistics and then I uh, have a minor in economics. Yeah, so at uh, I know all the different colleges say it differently at Harvard. Concentration for the others who might not be <laughs> familiar with the Harvard system, um, concentrations are our word for major and um, our word for minor is a secondary field. So right, you can have the opportunity to study two technically very different things and still be able to graduate um, and go into the workforce with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one of my friends is doing uh, computer science as a major and English as a secondary, which are like completely wow. two different spectrums. So I think it's a very flexible and uh, nice system. And have there been any classes that you have taken or are thinking about taking, which would have been sort of very like exploratory, like you never thought you'd take a class like that. Yes, so uh, last semester I actually took an economic justice class. I'd never done uh, economics in my life or any social justice class. Um, and I got to explore different uh, philosophical um, mind uh, sets. Uh, we did a lot of readings on authors I did know about, uh, Noze Gross and we talked a lot about uh, distributive justice and it actually got me thinking more about doing economics. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, that's quite an interesting, interesting class it sounds like. And when it comes to classes, um, what about if you wanted to get more um, in depth with a certain subject, is that possible as well? Oh yeah, it's definitely possible. There's definitely uh, 
further research, you can work with the professor later. Uh, I took a genetics class and some of my peers were so into genetics, went on to do research with the professor and you get assigned more readings and you, you help the professor with their research. So there's definitely many opportunities to go in depth with the knowledge if you're interested. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And besides research or what other types of extracurricular activities are you involved in? Uh, okay. So I I am in the Harvard Women's a Women in Business Club and they basically help you with uh, applying for internships, uh, talk about professionalism, uh, some of the help that I never got. I think it's very cool that we're able to have such a uh, help at hand and opportunities. That's wonderful to hear. And also you're a summer intern here in the admissions office, which is wonderful as well. Um, and you can be part of this podcast. Um, but right, there are so many different types of extracurricular activities. And we've spoken a little bit about sort of your transition here and the different activities and academics here. So now thinking back, what did, when you got accepted to uh, come to Harvard, what was your reaction? What were your parents' reaction? Did you think it was going to be like this uh, after your first year sort of reflecting back? Uh, so when I got in, I was obviously very excited, couldn't contain my excitement, but I did think that I had a tough time ahead of me. I thought that everything was just gonna be rigorous, too rigorous, uh, competitive, lots of work, just gonna be on studies all day, never have a free time to hang out with friends. But after arriving here, I figured out that it was not that bad. Like departments want you to succeed. They offer a lot of academic uh, help. There's from, for the math department, there's the math question center. There's also the, the ARC, uh, they help you with uh, peer tutors, uh, tutoring, which something which is something that was quite embarrassing in high school. You'd be like, I need a tutor <laughs> when I was the one who used to tutor people. But they encourage you to get help. And at the end, you figure out that getting help is not actually a bad thing because everyone is getting help. Everyone is going through office hours. The way in which uh, uh, study materials are set up here is such that uh, you can only attempt them if you're working in groups, uh, working with others. So uh, the academic uh, life here, it is rigorous and tough, but you can definitely navigate it. Yeah, and so thank you so much for sharing more about the group work and the collaborativeness. I definitely know that thinking about having such a diverse um, student population, everyone comes from all different walks of life, people come from all different types of places, not everyone is going to have the same sort of writing level, the same sort of math level, what I thought was fantastic math might be different from what they think is fantastic <laughs> math, yeah, so I think it's wonderful that um, it's encouraged to reach out and to help get help, and especially not just help from professors that sometimes can, is possible, but sometimes intimidating, but it's your peers, right? Mm -hmm. So the peer tutoring is, you know, or the other tutors that live with you, those are the people who can help you with work and it's not always a professor or a graduate student, so that's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. And talking about like adjusting to academics, you find out that like sometimes as an international student, the way we learn math, even simple writing is completely different. Like when I wrote my first uh, writing paper, uh, my professor was like, oh, you should only use words when you can say them out. Then I was like, but that's academic writing. It's supposed to sound professional, mm -hmm. sound sophisticated. And they were like, oh no, that's not how we write here. It's just all about clarity. Then I was like, oh no. But there is a writing center where they help you with writing. So at the end, uh, when I took uh, my second writing class in the spring semester, um, my professor wrote me an email. Then they were like, oh, you've improved so much. This is such a good paper. And I was like, oh, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> yes, definitely. We all, um, I think a lot of the time, thinking about writing and the way express, we express ourselves is so different from all different parts of the world that being able to have that kind of support and be like, okay, this is the way that college writing is here. This is the way I need to write and express myself. And that's, um, and people are understanding, right? That you're learning and that we're all trying to kind of understand how to write in a way that 
works or that makes sense um, for the place that we're in. So that's awesome to hear that yeah. you're able to improve by <laughs> your next semester. Um, so now that you've been here for a year, um, I would like to know, you know, transitioning here, what is something that is super surprising for you uh, when you came to the US or when you came to Harvard? What is something that has been very surprising? Uh, okay, so I'll say the most surprising thing, well, not just Harvard, but just like in the US when I'm moving around, back home, when I'm walking around in the streets, I could just greet anyone <laughs> on a random day, and it's very normal. But here, people get like a little shocked, and I just found out that it's also a culture shock to them. <laughs> At first, I used to think that it's people being rude, but now people are just like not used to it. <laughs> Not used to um, people saying hello to each other. Yeah, <laughs> just like random people on the street saying hello to you. <laughs> right, and that would be sort of like the warm and welcoming thing to do back home <laughs> or even other parts of the US. The way you greet and the way you don't greet is a different norm everywhere. <laughs> so that's interesting to know for sure. And, on, um, and if they're students, uh, international students, students outside the US were to come um, or, cons or thinking about coming to Harvard, what is some advice that you would want to share with them? Um, I would say uh, don't be scared to reach out and ask questions. Uh, I would say before coming here, I was so scared of asking questions. But just know that everyone is like out here to help you or like happy to help. Uh, even when you come here and start learning, uh, ask questions in class, no one, professors are waiting to have questions with students, they wanna share more about their life experience with you, more, even more than you wanna hear it, so please <laughs> ask questions. <That's> quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, I was so scared of asking questions, even before office hours, I would study the whole thing or want to figure out the answer before even asking the question, but that was so unnecessary because <laughs> everyone asks a question if, they're confused or anything, even the dumbest of questions are allowed. <laughs> so feel free to just like reach out for help because they are people who are just designated to help you out. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful to hear. I think that also adds to what you said earlier about the collaborativeness, but then also that the professors are expecting you to ask questions when you don't understand. And sometimes people learn so differently. Others Lecture style is great, but other times, sometimes it is that conversation or that back and forth that helps others learn, but the students all have different learning styles. So I think that's wonderful that, this, the, the, that the faculty is so uh, open to um, meeting with students and speaking with students. Um, and do you have a favorite class so far? Uh, so my favorite class, that would be uh, my math class, my calculus two class. I just like the way in which it was structured. Uh, when I first came in, then they were like, say that like uh, students learn well when they don't get material from the teacher, like when they don't get lectured. But when they do the math, I was like pissed. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna do so bad in this lab. <laughs> but by the end of the semester, I love the class. I really love the class because I feel like us doing most of the work in class makes it easier and it just boosts your confidence and your ability to approach mathematical problems differently. So I really loved the class. Yeah, and did you go to the math question center at all? Okay, so during the first few days, I did go. <laughs> but over time, when you get used to it, uh, to just like solving the problems, I would uh, work on the problems and then I compare the answers with my friends or like just work with my friends on the P-search, just like the, co the collaboration system. Just like after working on the P-search, I'll be like, oh, hey, is it what you got or something? Yeah, that's great. And will you continue, you think, with math? Oh, yeah, I am. I'm actually going to take um, multivariable calculus next semester, and I'm looking forward to that. Nice. <laughs> Not everyone can say they're looking forward to <laughs> math, and that's wonderful to hear that you found something that you're excited to continue with. Um, is there anything else that you're excited about coming up? You know, you have and three more years at Harvard, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, I guess being an upperclassman, because I have completed my first year now, and I just await the upperclassman experience. I'm mostly excited to being in my new house, because I'll have my own community with me. I've with my friends, and I'm excited to be living with them. 
How have you navigated um, your first year as an international student? How is that different from how perhaps a domestic U.S. student would have navigated Harvard? So there are a lot of resources to support you. Uh, I didn't get to go home, like I said before, during the winter break. But just uh, try to keep in touch with like the community that's like available to you. So. I tried to hang out with uh, some of like the Woodbridge Society and then like attended a lot of activities, just something to keep you company because over the winter it gets really lonely because other people get to go home and you only, well, there are a lot of students who are gonna stay on campus, but you would have to like stick with them and also try to uh, go to other activities during the semesters because you may get a little homesick. Just being around people who have a familiar experience with you could be really helpful in getting rid of that, at least momentarily. I think it is so important to have that community and to think of other ways to, um, when you first start, there's also, there are also different ways that you get oriented. So there is the first year international pre-orientation program. Um, did you attend that? Oh yeah, FIP. Yeah, so I came in uh, like a week earlier and then I attended FIP. It was an amazing experience. I got like uh, acquainted to like life here in Cambridge, how it's gonna be like uh, living, in camp living and learning in Cambridge. Uh, I actually took my first train when I came here it was a fun experience. There were a lot of uh, activities. We had a talent show, we had little competitions and games, just meeting people. They are international uh, students, but they're not necessarily coming from the same country. So just like meeting people from different countries who also have an international experience, that was fun. Yeah, that's wonderful to hear. And um, what was the talent show like? I've never heard of this talent show, so I want to know more. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So people danced, some sang, and we, we, we have quite talented people at Harvard. People play, played guitars and all sorts of instruments. <laughs> that sounds so fun. So you arrived a week before and did this program. Yeah, yeah. And I moved in earlier, which was like nicer because I didn't have to like go through the hustle and bustle when everyone is moving in all the true, same true. The moving in in the beginning must have been so busy, <laughs> especially during that time because Boston is such a student, such a big college town. <laughs> yeah, are there are a lot of colleges here. So it's a, a lot happens during graduation time, a lot happens during move-in time in August, so there's a lot going on. But then now over the summertime, did you realize there are just a lot <laughs> less people around? Yeah, but the weather is nice. The weather is nice. <laughs> I, I have to say that the weather for me is a little bit too humid <laughs> because back home it's dry heat and it's not as humid. And um, coming here the, the, over the summertime gets a little bit humid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but at least the sun is up um, at 4 p.m., which is great. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Patience, so much for joining us today for this podcast. I know a lot of uh, prospective students and viewers out there learned a lot about what it's like to be an international student here on Harvard uh, campus and also learned a lot about uh, transitioning here, learning a lot, a lot about how to find community here. So I know that they really appreciate you sharing your experience. Thank you. <laughs>